Hello everybody and welcome to this iOS development tutorial. In this video we're going to take a look at how we can create a simple table view based application um, whose rows are editable. So I've got an example up on screen that I built earlier and as you can see it's a pretty simple table view uh, just has the numbers 1 through 10 in it and it has two buttons in the navigation controller one says edit and the other says just as a plus symbol now what I can do here is I can tap the edit uh, I'm sorry the the plus symbol and that gives me a UI alert view where I can essentially enter another number so I can just say 11 hit OK that gets added to my table view I can then hit if I'd like edit and then I get these little uh, subtraction symbols I can hit that it gives me a delete option As soon as I hit delete that is removed from my table view so of course I could delete other items as well and uh, add new ones and things like that so this is essentially what we're going to build within this application and um, one of the things that I want to point out right off the bat is we will be using um, or we will be creating an application that is a subclass of UI view controller now this is an important distinction and I probably will mention it more than once uh, and that's because the process um, or the steps or the code that we have to implement is slightly different depending on whether or not you're starting with a UI view controller or if you're starting with a UI table view controller subclass so anyway more on that later let's get started so our first step of course is to fire up Xcode and create a new application so in this example we're going to just be under iOS application I'm gonna select the single view application hit next it's gonna ask me what I'd like to call it I'm just going to call this edit T TV so um, for table view we're gonna set the device to iPhone and we will leave use automatic reference counting check hit next it's gonna ask me where I'd like to save this I'm just gonna save it on my desktop hit create and give Xcode a couple seconds here to finish wrapping things up okay so it looks like our projects created Xcode's now gonna wanna index some of the stuff uh, so let's just give it a couple seconds um, so if we're looking at our application structure while the indexing is going on you'll notice that there's just uh, two app delegate files there's three view controller files the header the implementation file and the nip file the nip file is actually going to be our first uh, stop so let's let's click on that and load up the view controller .xib file then what we want to do is from the objects library we will want to drag and drop a UI table view object onto the view here and if you're not seeing this objects library it's probably because your particular view is hidden and so you need to be able to see the utilities view and that is displayed by clicking this button up top in the upper right hand corner once you're there you want to be um, uh, looking towards the bottom find in this objects library the UI table view so you can just type in actually table view and it'll filter it out and give you the table view itself so we grab that drag it and drop it onto our view and there we go next what we want to do is we will want to create a outlet to our table view so let's do that and the easiest way to actually do that is to click on this assistant editor button it's the one that looks like a little tuxedo um, you select that and then you drag and um, drag a connection essentially to this area here so it's gonna tell us what do you want to create an outlet that's correct and what do we want to call this we'll just call this something as simple as my table view hit connect and there we are now in the past when I've used Xcode uh, when you use this particular process what um, essentially happens is we get an add property statement inserted into our header file and we get an at synthesize statement automatically inserted into our implementation file so let's take a look at that so here's our add property statement for the IB outlet we created for our table view and let's take a look at the implementation file notice that the at synthesize statement is not getting created this is something that I've noticed since upgrading Xcode I think I'm running uh, let's take a look here Xcode about Xcode I'm running version 4.5.1 and it still doesn't seem to be fixed at least for me so let me go ahead and synthesize it we just call that my table view so no big deal we just need to make sure we catch that and we now need to jump back to our view controllers nib file now we have one more step that we have to do here 
which is we need to connect or set up this table view to use files owner or our view controller class as its data source and delegate. Now I will be flying through some of the basic table view code uh, simply because this is a tutorial on how to edit the table view and not to create a simple one. So what I would recommend is if you've never used table views before, take a look at my other tutorial that shows how you can actually set up a simple table view. That code gets reused time and time again and so it should be a little bit easier for you to follow this tutorial if you've seen the other one or maybe you know how to create table views and this is just going to be um, a refresher. Alright, so let's right click this drag a connection from data source and delegate to files owner there we are and with that done we want to also jump back to our view controllers header file and explicitly state that this class view controller will act uh, will conform to the data source and delegate protocols for our UI table view so we just type in UI table view data source UI table view delegate again nothing new here if you've worked with table views before like I said if you haven't uh, definitely take a look at the other tutorial uh, so it's a little bit easier to follow along okay with that done our next step is going to be to actually implement um, some of our data source and delegate methods but I suppose before we do that one of the first things we'll need to do is create some kind of um, an object that would allow us to store a set of values now if you remember from our example I essentially had a table view with these particular numbers and what these are are basically NS string objects and I had stored them in um, in my table view now to be able to display them in my table view what I'd actually done is created something called an NS mutable array now if you've watched my other tutorial on creating a simple table view you'll know that what we've used in the past is a very simple example where we've built an NS array and uh, essentially just fill that with NS string objects and then basically load the values of the NS string objects from the array into our table view. Now, since this example is a little bit different, we actually want to affect the table view itself and change what's in it. We can't actually use an NS array. We have to use a different kind of object. We have to use something called an NS mutable array. So let's just create a quick property for that. We're going to say at property strong non atomic, and we're going to say it's an NS mutable array. And the big difference there really is that the NS mutable array is editable at runtime. So, unlike an NS array where once you've uh, filled it with objects, you can't actually change it, this can be changed when the application is running. So, that's our big incentive there. We're going to create an NS mutable array called numbers, and I'm going to jump back to my implementation file and go ahead and synthesize it. I think we called it numbers. Yep, there we go. Alrighty. And with that done, we can actually uh, uh, begin doing some work here. Alright, so if we wanted to fill our table view, um, what we would need to do, of course, is first instantiate or uh, allocate some memory for our NS mutable array. We can do that in our view did load method. So um, just remove this up and we'll say. Our NS mutable array. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say numbers and NS mutable array alloc. And then we're going to use a very similar method to what we have always used in the past, which is init with objects. And the objects here will, of course, be our NS string values, uh, namely, let's just say one, two, so on and so forth. So let me just quickly fill that in three and I might just go up to five just to save us some time here four and five okay and that always ends with nil so that's good command s to save so now we've got um, essentially uh, this NS mutable array that we can use within our uh, uh, to load up our table view right with that done, what I'm going to do, um, again, like I said, I apologize that I'm flying through some of the table view code, but I'm going to use a little shortcut called snippets. And snippets are um, essentially a great tool if you work with table views and certain kinds of objects all of the time. 
you'll find that the code that you use is very, very similar each time around. So one of the things I do is I create snippets for some of these codes. And if you've never worked with snippets before, I'll show you an example of how it works or how, you know, in action. But if you want to learn about how you can create your own snippets, take a look at my video on that particular subject. So in this case, I've got a little shortcut or snippet that loads up all the um, relevant or the, the table view data source and delegate methods that I often use um, with one shortcut. So all I have to do in my example is just type in TTT and that will load for me code that I previously written um, with regards to data source. So you can see how helpful that can be if you work with table views quite a bit and I do. Um, so it's much easier than um, you know, having to remember all of this code and remember which methods need to be written and things like that. So let me just fly through this real quick so the folks that um, uh, you know that I've not implemented anything too crazy. You'll notice here that number of sections in table view, we're going to return one. This is a value that I will need to change. This method's called table view number of rows and sections. So it wants to know how many rows are there in my section. I've got this hard coded to 10. Obviously, that's not going to be correct. So what I'm going to change this to is numbers dot count which is essentially a count of the number of objects that are currently in our NS mutable array and it turns out that in this case it's actually five so we return numbers dot count then what we'll want to do is this is a standard method that we use uh, called table view self row at index path and this is what we actually use to draw the cells and down here I'll need to change of course I've got the cell dot text label dot text property which is what actually writes the text to uh, the table view set to just you know the cell number and what I'm going to change this to is something like numbers and um, let's say object at index and index path dot row okay command s to save okay you'll notice that I've got a delegate method with nothing in it uh, it's called table view did select row at index path and this is just sort of an artifact that's coming because I've I've added in uh, some of that extra code and I won't actually be using this method in this example so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it um, so if you're implementing this from scratch because you don't have snippets in place uh, then you know don't worry about that method it's really these the data source methods that we'll need to be able to draw this so let's try and run our application and see what we've got at this point Okay, let's give it a couple more seconds here. Should be just about done. Okay, so we've got a standard table view. Uh, we've got those uh, five NS string objects that we set up within our NS mutable array appearing on our screen. And of course, um, it does nothing. So at this point, we, uh, if you remember from our, I'll, let me go ahead and stop our application here and go back to the simulator so you can kind of see what we had. So remember what our goal is to actually build an application that has a table view, but we also need a UI navigation controller because we want to be able to add these two buttons, yeah, maybe even add a title and things like that. So that's probably going to be a good place to switch to. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, obviously that doesn't come out of the box. What we need to do to be able to implement the UI navigation controller is uh, jump into our app delegates implementation file. There is a method at the top of the page called application did finish launching with options, and this is where we'll actually do um, some some setup work. So okay, so here we notice that we are instantiating a view controller called um, you know well it's called view controller, and this is where we can kind of jump in and add some additional code. So first, let's create a UI navigation controller. So I'm just going to say create a UI navigation controller and pretty simple set that up we just say UI navigation controller and I'm going to call it something silly like nav and we do we allocate some memory for it and then it's going to it's got a method called init with root view controller and that's the one we want and it, you'll notice that its parameter is essentially a view controller and guess what we've got one right here so this is exactly what we're going to paste in so I'm just going to type in self dot view controller so basically we're saying initialize it with a view controller that we just instantiated above here and then we have to change one more line of code which is here we've got self dot window dot root view controller is equal to this view controller and really what we want to change it to is nav so let's just highlight this swap that out for nav and you'll notice that that little warning goes away which was simply appearing because we hadn't used it since we had 
instantiated. Okay, with that done, we actually have um, uh, our navigation control in place, believe it or not. So let's do a command R and run our application. And this time you'll see that we do have a navigation controller up top. Of course, it doesn't have the buttons yet, it doesn't have the title yet, and that's what we're going to work on next. So I am now going to stop this video because we're coming up on 15 minutes um, and we want to make sure people can stop and work on their code as well um, and then sort of catch up on the next uh, part of this tutorial. So thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the second part.